Cook on Sunday, eat till Thursday. I'm Allie and you're watching Economy Bites. It looks like chili. It's fine. It does look like chili. As long as it doesn't look like blood. So today we're going to be making chili with our friend Annalise Griffin, who's here from Brooklyn based. Oh, we're gonna be making chili with her recipe today. It's gonna to be super good. So let's go to the grocery store and get all our ingredients. So what's the first thing we need to do? To seed and soak all of the great chilies. Chili puya, pasillas. And they're a little sort of um, fruitier. Arbol chilies, these are spicy. Guajillos, which are sort of bright red. I use eight to 10 large ones. If you want it to be a little less spicy, you can use like maybe six to eight um, of the larger chilies, but if you want it to be pretty spicy, first drop them on the floor. <laughs> I cleaned that floor yesterday, really, seriously, really good. I ripped the stem off this chili, and there's a whole bunch of seeds inside. These are dried chilies. So I'm gonna pour the seeds out into my garbage bowl, right? Yeah. Chili montage. If you don't pour out the seeds, it'll be killing you spicy. Yeah, and like, like for sure. Like unable to eat. And we're just pouring the husks into here. We're gonna um, soak it in hot water. So we're soaking our chilies. We're gonna set them aside, chop up our onion, right? Voila. <laughs> got lost in my purse. I'm going to dice some garlic. I would put four or five pretty sizable cloves in there. So Annalise, is this your first time being a featured chef on an online cooking show? I think it is. How's it going so far? It's going all right. <laughs> If you're gonna seed a lot of chilies, you might wanna wear latex gloves. And if you don't, make sure to wash your hands before you, say, rub your eye or go to the bathroom or definitely touch anything touch sensitive. Touch a scab. Next, we're going to ready our spices. The combination of coriander seed and cumin together, like they just work. If you've ever like had a seed of coriander in your food, it can be like a lot of taste all at once. We're just gonna grind it up so that it's easier to take down. So first, what we're gonna do is toast it. So I have my little cast iron skillet, which is what I like to use for toasting, because it's big it's and like thick. like the perfect size. Yeah, it. it's perfect. We're just gonna take a tablespoon of these little seeds, and this is dry, no oil. Toast them there for a minute. Just like three or four minutes. So we're gonna be using cumin, also a tablespoon. So a tablespoon of cumin. Black pepper. Black pepper. Okay, coriander seeds, we're putting them here in this coffee grinder. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna pour that in here. We have here a large pot. And you want it to be sort of uh, have a wide bottom because you're gonna brown the ground beef. I'm gonna put it on like medium high. This is ground beef that came from the meat hook, which is in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Full disclosure and all, my uh, my husband is a butcher there and one of the owners. And so he so this did is... this grind for me yesterday. Yeah, they grind it to order, so. So it costs a little bit more than the meat that you would buy at the grocery store, like two or three bucks more. But the rest of this recipe is like each can of these beans cost 65 cents. This is grass fed, right? Yeah. This is not just beef, this is beef that was made with love, right? Yeah. It was made True. with love. True. So we're gonna get this hot, break it up. Yeah, you just wanna get it nice and brown. This is when you turn off your fire thingy on the ceiling. And you can see how there's oil in the bottom of the pan already, because it's releasing that fat. And you can add the onions and all these pieces of garlic. The next thing we're gonna add is the spices and the salt, and then we'll put in the tomato. So you wanna season as you go. I'll give that like a minute for the spices to sort of soak into the beef. Two cans of dark red kidney beans, a can of garbanzo beans, chickpeas, and a can of black beans. I actually put them in with the- With um, the juice? With the juice. Oh. So I'm taking this whole 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes, and I'm just gonna toss this in. You know, this is also the makings of a good, like, taco stuffing. I also really like to serve this with, I think that Jiffy cornbread, you know, the one that's in the blue and white box, mm -hmm. which vegetarians, watch out, it has lard in it for some unknown reason, is pretty much the most delicious cornbread I've ever had. And we have this on high heat. We're gonna take the chilies and blend those up in the blender. And you'll want a fair amount of that water, too. Now, now they're, they're like, like pliant and easy to blend up. The spiciness just of this water is like making my <laughs> eyes water right now. I add salt at this point because it incorporates okay. the salt really nicely. A full teaspoon. Right. Ooh! How did that happen? Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> I'm gonna have chili paste on my face. That could have been um, like blinding. 
So you definitely want to use your biggest pot. Don't skimp. At this point, it just looks like a bunch of junk in a dish. But then if you cook anything long enough, it'll it just coalesces at a certain point, generally around the 40 minute point. So you want to cook this without a lid on um, so that it'll condense down a little bit. Some of the water will evaporate out. And you probably want to cook it over medium heat. Yeah, you just want to give it like 40 minutes, an hour, even an hour and a half if you have the, uh, the time. And your house will smell really good. Really good. It. Okay, so our chili has been cooking for about 45 minutes. And looking at it, you can see that it's still like soupy. And so we're gonna let it cook another half minutes. hour or so would be good. And then it'll get sort of like more condensed. And this is a good stage to um, adjust your spicing at all. So what we're gonna do, I show you how to make a traditional Texas style Frito pie, which is probably the grossest and most delicious like party food that you could ever eat. So you might not want to eat this for dinner unless you like had a really bad day and you're like want to treat yourself to something gross <laughs> and yummy. But it's something really fun to show you. So what we have here are bags of Fritos. So we're gonna open these it's up. Sort here. of like prison food. Exactly. You can see that they're like any chip bag that gyps you. They're just half full. And we're just gonna get a spoonful of chili. This is country cooking. I remember actually, the one time I really remember eating these is at a third or fourth grade birthday party. And I'm not gonna say the name of the girl, but if you remember and you see this show, person, you should send me an email and tell me that you remember. We're gonna just take some cheese. You could also put some sour cream if you wanted. Dinner is served. I don't think I've ever eaten dinner out of a um, chip bag, bag before. Bag of chips? I mean, except for when I eat a bag of Doritos for dinner, which Great. doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all right. That is dinner of champions right there. So we want to say a huge thank you to Annalise for coming and cooking with us and giving us her special chili recipe. Thanks for having me. I am really excited to eat this all week long. Thank you for bringing us the meat from the meat hook and your recipe. If you are not subscribed to the Brooklyn-based, they call, we call them Blee Meals. Is that we call them Blee Meal. We're trying to coin that a blog, email. Blog, email. But it's an email newsletter. It comes out three days a week. It tells you all the best things that are happening in Brooklyn that week. So if you're not subscribed, go to brooklynbased.com. Click on Sunday, eat till Thursday. I'm Allie, this is Annalise, and I'll see you next time. Okay, let's try that again. I don't know what's happening. It's like shaking the table. <laughs> That's how hot and spicy it is. <gasps> now you can say right. firsthand that like the funny things that happen are, are not scripted.